What is up YouTube, Dylan Pearson here, and in this video, I'm gonna be covering the question a lot of people have been asking, is Shopify still profitable in 2019? Short answer is hell yes it is. As you see, this is a store that I launched about 70 days ago that's done $251,000 at about a 32% profit margin in that time period. So it's very profitable still, but there's a few key takeaways from what I'm about to show you that you need to grasp and master in order to be profitable with Shopify in 2019. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. If you're new to the channel, my name's Dylan. I've been doing e-commerce now for about five years and I've launched multiple six-figure per month brands. And here on this channel, I share some of that information and key knowledge in order for you to create a profitable business that you can run anywhere in the world. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any videos. I usually release one to two videos per week, a minimum of one video per week, and it's always filled with value like this one. Also, if you could hit the like button, it's greatly appreciated and it really helps support my channel. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in to the topic. Is Shopify still profitable, specifically in 2019? So this is a double-ended question, and basically there's two answers to it. No and yes. A lot of you, if you've been in this kind of world of e-commerce and Shopify dropshipping, as a lot of people word it, you've seen a lot of people talk about how you cannot make money doing this, and that is partly true. But on the other end, you have stores like mine, which has done $250,000 in less than three months, and it's made a lot of money um, in terms of the profit margin. So yes, there is a lot of money to still be made with drop shipping as a business model and using Shopify as a platform. But there's some takeaways that really are going to decide the answer to this question, specifically in your case. So what's not working? Why are people not being profitable when they try to create a business through Shopify? Well, this is usually what they do. They select a trendy product, they create a basic store with a bunch of different products on it to test them, then they create a ton of different Facebook ads to test all of the products they just listed, and they lose all their money. On the other end, it is working for people like myself, um, because I find a product that solves a problem, brand, 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 branding is the most important aspect in my opinion, as I've stated in other videos, and then number three, engaging ads. These are all criteria that I'm going to cover in depth in this video, so make sure to stick around throughout the entirety of it, because the last piece of information is super, super important. So when I say selecting a trendy product versus a product that solves a problem, what do I mean? Here is a perfect example. Trendy products are things like fidget spinners, people that are products that people are talking about, people and friends that you see buying and you know using for a period of time. It's it's what you you see when you go on Instagram and scroll through Facebook. I mean, my, I think my grandma had a fidget spinner. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, we have problem solving products, which is something like this posture corrector. As you see, it's it's for people that have maybe back pain or have overall bad posture when they're sitting at the, in the office, and this helps pull their shoulders back, creates a good spinal posture, and a straight back. This is the difference between a trending product and a problem solving product. That's not to say there is not money to be made in trending products because for example, people that sold fidget spinners at the start and even during the middle of that peak made an absolute killing. I'm talking millions of dollars off fidget spinners. I'm not kidding. On the other end, though, problem-solving products are much more evergreen. What I mean by evergreen is they're not, they don't have the same peak as something like a fidget spinner. And let me show you this. So this is a great tool to use. You can actually go to Google and type in just Google Trends, 
go ahead and click on trending on Google and then watch if you enter in fidget spinner what you're gonna see and we could sort by we'll just do past five years this is what a trending product looks like you have a huge peak and a huge decline and now it's back to where it started aka dead whereas if you search something like back pain you're gonna see a very very consistent interest over time and it's actually going up so what this means is that any product that solves back pain is always going to be in demand which is why a problem solving product is absolutely in my opinion the way to go if you want to create a sustainable business that doesn't phase out as a trend phases out and there's always going to be new audiences to reach because people will always eventually continuously have back pain unfortunately you know as you age or as you play sports there's always going to be new people in that group in that audience that would be interested in your back pain solving product so yes definitely it works but you have to choose a product that's gonna solve a problem you might get lucky with the trend but 99 percent of the time you're not and you're gonna lose money next up we have branding so i'm going to show you the difference between a good brand and a bad overall branding and site so i mentioned too that non-branded sites are the ones that are kind of thrown together have a bunch of products the consumer doesn't really know what they're doing on the site so here i have a bad branded overall website so it's called sleep tight babies in all honesty though this looks a lot better than a lot of the sites i see i just wanted to choose this one to show you guys that if you see anything less than this don't take any tips from the person that's trying to teach you something or if you're just trying to get ideas because it's not the way to go this is actually decently branded it has a logo but if you look at the site there's just a lot going on i don't know what i'm here to do you know i might browse but it doesn't there's no call to action that's just popping out so in terms of a brand sleep type babies i don't that's it's not a great brand name. I like one word brand names, two word maximum. It's not something that you're going to remember and talk to your friend like, oh yeah, I just bought that Sleep Tight Babies cotton pram liner. It, just, it doesn't really flow. So this is what I recommend staying away from. These sites with thousands or hundreds of products, just bad formatting, no clear logo. It has some text, but... I don't really consider that a logo that really resonates with the, the person shopping. Um, product images are really inconsistent, different sizes. Coloring is kind of hard to read. It's just overall not good branding. And the conversion rate for this site, I would bet is probably one to 2%. Whereas with my site, I'm getting about a 5% conversion rate because I focused on the branding. So let's take a look at a very good brand. So this is called High Smile. And this company originally started out drop shipping, and now they do um, their own private label and manufacturing. So, High Smile is absolutely killing it. I would assume this company is doing a 10 to 20 million a month. Um, I see them everywhere. Their videos have 70 million views on Facebook, so they're absolutely killing the game right now. But this is what a brand looks like. They don't even need text. If you see this logo, and you've been on their website, you're gonna recognize that you know it's High Smile. Very clean. Um, call to action right here shop high smile you can scroll down it's a very basic theme you know you don't need anything like this and if you look at it clearance archives that's what the first thing you see on this website this one teeth whitening kits whitens and you can just tell the amount of effort that they put into branding and this site is um, a great example to you so you can check out their product pages straightforward gives the benefits, gives reviews, has a big call to action, good product imagery. Let's take a look at a product on this website. Mama Designs Quilted Playmat. It's still loading. This is horrible additional information, no reviews. You know, it doesn't really sell me. Um, not even sell me, but it doesn't teach me, it doesn't show me really why I need this product from this site. I could go on Amazon and search the same thing. Whereas with this, I feel I feel like I have to use this brand. 
I feel like I want to I want to have the experience of shopping through High Smile after looking at this site, reading the reviews. So this is what I mean by brand, brand, brand. Focus, spend 10 times the amount of time you, you do finding your product on branding around that product and creating an experience a shopping experience for that customer. Make sure everything looks clean. Make sure it has a consistent color scheme. Choose, I like to go with three colors. As you see, this one uses black, white, and that pink. And everything they have is really based around those colors. It doesn't stray too far, maybe a little blue and some images here. But on other sites, you're gonna have a variety of colors and it, it really adds a consistency and a feel of um, you know, effort and brand trust. So focus on branding. Branding is absolutely huge. And those are two good examples of a non-branded, not just an overall bad site and bad store versus a brand, 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 branded store, which is great. Finally, we have the ads. What's not working profitably is basic ads these days. And I'll show you examples of these. What is working is ads that get people to like, share, and comment. Facebook loves that. They're going to show it to more people for cheaper, and people are going to share it. You're going to get organic traffic, overall more conversions. People are going to watch more. You'll get more data. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and watch a bad ad first. So this is actually that same website that I pulled up. So here it is. No volume. I don't bad quality video like what is going on i see it looks like a kid eating really fast i don't even know if he if he's eating and drinking or something but what is what is going on in this video it makes absolutely no sense um this description is bad if i saw this and look at the engagement i know they probably spent about 500 dollars on this ad based off the data that i saw with it and it has three likes and one comment this is an example of an ad that's gonna lose the money that you invest. So let's go back and take a look at a good ad. This is High Smile. This is the website we just saw. It has some nice music. It clearly shows what you do with it, explains how it works, shows the packaging, shows the experience of a consumer, explains how it's a simple process to use. Their video is 45 seconds long, which is perfect timing. It'll work for both Instagram and Facebook. It's in the 1080 by 1080 format. A lot of custom made video. This is an example of an ad that works. Has a clear question that engages the user. Have you tried High Smile? Explains what it does. Gives them a link to the website. Whereas with this, what is going on here? So basically, this is a great ad and this is a bad ad. And that is why a lot of people are stating Shopify is not profitable. And one thing you need to note too is Shopify is just a platform. Shopify is not a business model. When people talk about Shopify, they're usually talking about drop shipping or private labeling. And those are both business models that have been around for 40 to 50 years now and are still used by some of the world's biggest companies. They're not going away. Drop shipping is going to be here for the remainder of time. It's just how people go about creating a business. And that's what I feel like gets overlooked a lot is people think they can just list products and make money. But in reality, you are creating a business. You are creating experience for a user and you need to focus on that. That's why it's not working for people. They're doing trendy products, general stores that are uh, not branded and they're creating basic ads, throwing them up using the first video they find on the internet and it doesn't work and they blame it on the entire business model of drop shipping in the platform of Shopify. Whereas I took the time to really find a, a group of people with a problem, found a product that solves it, built a brand around it, did the color scheme, did the logos, went over every single detail of formatting, spelling, um, the HT, the code, make sure everything was loading fast. And then to sum it up, I created ads that people would share, like, comment on, and ultimately visit my site and convert at a 5% conversion rate. So 
Is Shopify still profitable? Hell yes, it is. It's gonna be profitable for a very long time to come. It's just the barrier to entry is getting higher, which is a good thing. You're not gonna have as much competition because people are gonna try this, fail, and then quit. Whereas if you keep at it and you learn how to do these three things right here, I guarantee you will find success at some point. And I wish you the best of luck. I hope you got some value from this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and notifications on, drop a like on this video, and any questions that you have, maybe for future videos or this video specifically, let me know in the comments. Give me a follow on Instagram. I reply to every DM that's sent to me, so DM me on Instagram too, that works. And I will see you guys next time. Dylan out.